Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, MC Mora here. In today's video, we are gonna be reviewing the summer update stream from the Street Fighter uh, team and today they showed us Oro, they showed us Akira, they uh, showed us even the fifth character that will be released in November and showed us more a, of a gameplay breakdown for both of these characters. So let's, uh, let's first actually check out Oro. So they first started out by showing off his V skill 1. We had already seen this in some of the previous stream. I think it was the Rose stream where we got a closer look into Oro. It doesn't seem like he changes that much and I have a feeling that Oro was ready for a while to be completely honest. But they were holding him off to release him along with Akira. At least that is what it looks like to me. But anyways, we here got a look at his V-Skill 1. It's a slow moving projectile that you can uh, set out at different trajectories. Here they showed that you can throw a fireball and this will actually get you enough advantage to release it. He can use it obviously and then use his command hopes to cover the distance. It looks like it can be a really powerful tool to just zone your opponent or to even simply using it as a get in tool, right? Like we just seen him use it, then use his chicken hob and use that as an approach option, which does seem to be pretty powerful. Or is one of these characters who have multiple ways of movement? Like he have a double jump, he have the chicken jump, obviously dashing and all of that, so I can see it being good. It seems like he will be able to hang in the fireball war, so that's actually pretty interesting. Uh, then they showed his other V-Skill and it's V-Skill 2. In many ways it's reminding me of the Balrog V-Skill, uh, Balrog's V-Skill 1. Uh, it doesn't seem like it goes through fireballs, at least they never showed it, which I'm gonna assume if it was going through fireball, if it had that property they would have released it, but anyways, he does have a kick follow-up and a punch follow-up. The punch is an overhead and that overhead you can actually combo after on hit. The kick have juggled properties, we've seen him launch the opponent multiple times and then follow up with the kick follow up so it looks like the kick you will actually be able to combo after it and obviously you can just empty V-Skill, not commit to either of the follow ups and go for the throw and uh, one of the things that they showed in some of his matches is that if he happened to charge his standing heavy punch he does have enough frame advantage to combo into the overhead punch and then follow up after. So I, I think V-Skill 1, the fireball, is gonna be better in matches where you have to zone your opponent or that Oro will be struggling to get in, while V-Skill 2 seems like it's more straightforward V-Skill that you can just use to build V-Gage or even combo into and once he actually has the first V-Trigger, it gives him a command grab option. Uh, that's what we're looking at now. Obviously he have an aerial and a grounded command grabs, and you have to think about this. So Oro now will have an overhead, and he'll obviously have lows like everyone else, the crouching medium kicks and all of that, and have a command grab. So that can be pretty uh, hard to defend against. And certainly with the V-Skill 1 and the Fireball, the command grab can be threatening. One of the really cool things that you have to know is that the V-Trigger, uh, the command grab V-Trigger, which is the V-Trigger 1, it's a two bars V-Trigger. They actually showed this in the uh, Devolver matches that they played. It's a two bar V-Trigger, so it looks really, really powerful. Oru seems like he can be a pretty powerful character. I am a little bit concerned about his range because it does seem to be fairly short. But anyways, uh, they obviously showed his V-Trigger 2 as well and his V-Trigger 2 is the Tungo Stone. This is a 3 bars V-Trigger and obviously the idea here is that it's a locked down V-Trigger, right? So you can do something on block and then use the stones to make it safe or you can do some stuff and then use the stones to follow up with your combos as you can see. So it's a really powerful V-Trigger. One of the interesting things here is that they said that if you press down and V-Trigger, Oro will summon 5 stones instead of 3, which would mean that he will actually get to have more, uh, like he will get to have more frame advantage and more better, or better properties pretty much, but at the cost of the V timer running out quicker. So that is it's an interesting idea to give the character multiple versions of the V trigger activations. I'm gonna assume that he will have multiple or different uh, V trigger activation animations, kind of like Mika when you do the instant Nadeshko and she just throws the one arm, or if you do the delay Nadeshko and she raises both of her arms. 
I think that might, might be the case, but obviously it's very visually apparent as well because he gets either a 4 stone or 5 stones. So overall, Oro looks interesting. Not really sure how his tournament viability will be, but I am interested to see what he can do once he launches. So next up we got a deeper breakdown on Akira. Akira is obviously a returning character from the Rival School games and uh, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, Akira looked phenomenal. I was much more impressed with Akira than Oro, at least from the competitive side and again just to be completely front, I'm gonna be surprised if Akira didn't end up being a really strong character. She does seem to have all of the options that you need to have to be a pretty powerful character in Street Fighter V, but we will see. First of all, they showed off her normals and her specials. She does seem to have a really fast walk speed. The crouching medium kick seems to have really insane range. They said that Akura, Akira needs to be a fighter, like she needs to fight from closer ranges, but her mid-range options looks insane. Like this standing heavy kick, it's a crush counter, it sends the opponent flying backward, it does seem to have gigantic range. So you have the elbow attack that reaches for a It's kind of like a dash punch special. Obviously it looked unsafe, but uh, again, it could be really good for whiff punishes because it seems really fast. The crouching medium kick looks nuts. And obviously she have this kick. It, it does seem like a Rekka style attack. I'm gonna call it the Tatsu Rekka. So it does seem like her Tatsu Rekkas are... Uh, like they are, they are combable from her crouching medium kick. Now let's assume that we have a character on our hands that have a crouching medium kick with really long range. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be hit confirmable, then you have a problem in your hand. You have a character that can walk back and forth, really strong mid-range option with her standing heavy kick, standing heavy bunch, the elbows and all of that. And she does have a strong fireball actually, and she does have a strong anti-fireball option that we will get at later. So she looks very promising. And as you know, the elbow you can combo after. Her Rekas, you can go, uh, you can do two of them in a row. So you can do medium into medium or low into medium or whatever into whatever. And they are saying that depending on your opponent, if they are crouching or if they are standing, you can get more damage. The heavy one looks like a launcher, but I'm gonna assume that it whiffs on the crouching opponent. So the first thing they revealed are uh, her V skill one. Obviously now we took a look at the uh, special moves. Now we are taking a look at the V skill 1 and the V skill 1 buffs up her fireball and this V skill looks insane. So it's an install V skill, these typically are not very powerful in Street Fighter V, right? But this one looks crazy. So it buffs up her fireball and take a look at this, the EX fireball is absurd. Like you can almost full screen, full screen punish, reuse Hadouken and you get wall pounds and you get the combo. So if it is easy for her to knock down the opponent and then charge up this V skill, she will have very powerful anti-zoning options which will allow her to walk in, use her walk speed, hit confirmable normals and all of that and deal massive damage. And also you can use the EX Aerial 1 to go through, uh, like to bait your opponent anti-air. Now one thing that they showed in the match, which was amazing, is that you can instant air EX Fireball which looks absurd, right? this looks like it's gonna be super plus on block, we're looking at something like Dull Sims EX Yoga Gear. Next up they showed up her V skill 2, and her V skill 2 is pretty much her aerial rave attack or aerial air burst, it's pretty much kind of like an aerial attack from the Guilty Gear series, obviously this was in rifle school at first, it does have a target combo that, uh, like you can do a target combo that will launch into this one, which is actually pretty nice because it means that Akira have a way to easily combo into her V skill and build V gauge. But if you happen to land the V skill as a regular hit or as a standalone hit, you actually can get the really big launcher attacks. Now, once you launch them in the air, you can hit them multiple times before the opponent will actually go into a tailspin animation. And when the opponent tailspin, pretty much means that you have to end it. So you can either go for her finishing attack from the aerial state or you can go for the EX Air Fireball, and these are the enders for her aerial, uh, you know, her aerial attack or aerial combos. 
Next up, they showed the V trigger, and V trigger one is pretty much her calling Daigo, and then Daigo will stand there and do the pose. This is pretty much reminding me of our Mika's V trigger two, where Nadeshko comes with the chair, and uh, this is a two bars V trigger, and it's a single use V trigger, so it can be good. Although I'm gonna be completely honest, I doubt the viability of this. It does seem like it's fairly easy for the opponent to block this. The area of effects doesn't seem that huge, so unless you corner your opponent or set this up with some sort of set play, I don't see how this can be very useful, right? It feels like it feels like it's gonna be harder to use than it actually appears. But obviously, we will see over time. We have to check it out and see it for ourselves. Now, the second V trigger is what I think is really impressive. This V trigger, pretty much, she goes into a state and then she can do multiple follow ups out of that. They said that one of them is actually really good for combos, one of them is really good for pressure and will leave her at a plus on block advantage. These attacks will allow Akira to do a lot of combos and deal massive damage. Obviously, she gets this game Asian self effect uh, after it. So, that's actually a pretty cool V trigger. None of her V trigger looks game changing or mind blowing, but I think we are looking at a Karen style character here where she wouldn't need V trigger to win. At least that is what it looks like to me. See, her fundamental tools look insane. Obviously, we haven't seen how good are her anti airs yet. We still need to see if the DP is like a true legitimate anti air DP. She does get better combos and you can combo uh, into the aerial combos from this V-Trigger. So it seems like it's a decent V-Trigger, but again, it is reminding me a lot of Karen's V-Trigger 1. So might not be the best thing ever, but still pretty decent overall. So finally we got our first look at the final character for Street Fighter V and it's a brand new character called Luke. Luke looks like an MMA fighter and I'm gonna be completely honest for lack of better terms my reaction to this was very lukewarm. Uh, again no pun intended but I am not the biggest fan of his design. He looks a bit too generic for my own taste. He looks like just a regular MMA guy. And I've always found the Street Fighter designs to be interesting because they are somewhat grounded in reality but dialed up to an 11. Luke just looks like an MMA guy, so I don't know. And I also have a little bit to say about the idea of, you know, creating a new character as the final character for the game. I think the game needed more. I think given the current state of the game and how everything is shaving up, the people needed a little bit more, they needed a fan favorite, they needed to know that Capcom is listening and I'm gonna be completely honest, throughout this entire stream, I felt like they were out of touch and I, I hate to say this, but I felt like we needed a lot more we got what we expected, some of the stuff here were really cool actually but I feel like the game needed more, for its current state and the landscape of fighting games in general we needed more, we didn't need an hour where 14 minutes of the stream is just uh, the commentator pretty much buying time and just talking about stuff we have already seen, right? I feel like that was a gigantic step back to what we already had. This entire stream could have been 20 minutes where they just delivered the content and we would have been happy. Instead, what we got was an hour full of fluff and 10 minutes actually full of worthy information which I found to be disappointing and Luke maybe he will be an amazing character but again if you are willing to invest in a new design at this current state of the game especially with Strive and how much people are down on Street Fighter in general at least gives the people a character that they wanted gives them someone that they wanted to play like Fei Long, like Viper, like Makoto give us something to bring these people back 
but that didn't happen unfortunately. Again, I will obviously be trying out Luke. Maybe his gameplay, it, it looks, his gameplay kind of reminds me of Brian Fury from the uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken game, so I, I imagine he will be a fun character to play around with, but I don't know. I, I, I can't, I, 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 I have to be honest, and my honest impression is that I am a bit disappointed overall. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment, it helps the channel so much. I will be leaving a link to the Patreon page and the Discord server page in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.